So what year it has been? Well, the period between January and February was good. Yeah, I had quite a nice couple of months the, to the start of the year. Mm. I went to my first opera and did some other fun things. <laughs> I had a new manager start in March. I saw him for one day. Then a two-week lockdown started. Still going now. <laughs> yeah, so obviously the uh, rest of the year has been taken up by a certain other health incident, let's say. Uh, we've managed to both stay employed. I had to make the uh, transition to completely remote teaching very quickly. And uh, thankfully, I was at least able to see my students or a subset mm. of my students in person a couple of times this semester. So that was OK. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've not seen any of my colleagues since March. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing the remote working. Uh, now I'm doing most of it from Linux. Very little from the Windows laptop. So that's a plus. But I appreciate the situation has been worse for a lot of people. But I have to say, I've been slightly jealous of all those people who have been on 80% 80, 80 pay and furloughed. But I guess that would be a long time to be off work and I would be bored then. Anyway, so a big issue with this health concern was that malicious actors would try and use it in the course of like emails to cause panic with people and make them do something. Turned out that wasn't really the case, despite what was being reported, and that most of the year turned out to be ransomware. In fact, so bad that uh, later on in the year, the US government warned of sanctions for paying ransomware demands if it was to, uh, let's say, certain countries that the United States doesn't uh, like. Another major thing that happened in the area of computing generally is that Windows 7 came to end of life. So the official support actually ended all the way back in January on the 14th. And Quids did a video about this and, and some of the pros and cons of either keeping with Windows 7 or moving to Windows 10 and the security issues surrounding this. Yeah, I'm sure there are people who haven't actually upgraded at this point and that is just more and more of a liability to keep your system going with Windows 7. In fact, I know my parents have got at least a couple of machines they have not upgraded. In fact, I think that I own one of those notebook computers that still actually has Windows 7 on it, although I haven't opened that in, uh, in more than a couple of years, but I still own a machine that has Windows 7 on it. That's okay, that can be a paperweight. A story that didn't really surprise me was that Avast, AVG and CCleaner had been uh, spying on users and giving away their data. Free antivirus products aren't free. No, you pay with them with something else. Your data. That's that's a lesson that we can take away for a lot of services that come for free, in quotes. So in 2019, Quids made a video in which he introduced a computer that I had acquired through a friend of my mum's. Um, so from way back in the late 90s, this is a 20 year old machine, at least. And you made a video on just getting it kind of running on what was already on it. Yeah, and it's painful. Then, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then earlier this year, did a video using Tiny Core Linux 11. So something perhaps a little bit more suitable for this machine, although obviously more up to date than the software that was running on it, but trying to get a version of Linux to run on very, very old hardware. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, actually tiny core wasn't the best. It turned out to be Antix or Antiques, as far as my memory goes. There, I think uh, it came with because Antiques came with a lot more stuff pre-installed, mm. so it was a lot easier to get going. And particularly like the Wi-Fi drivers are on there, <laughs> so we were able to get it on the internet and do stuff with it, whereas we couldn't with tiny core. Waterfox browser was sold to a marketing company called System One. That, that's a great definition of uh, entrusting the wolves to look after the sheep or the fox to look after the hens. <laughs> Nothing could possibly go wrong there, can it? Oh, in case some people hadn't realised, they also own Startpage because people were talking about that in my, my recent video of about DuckDuckGo. So new Startpage instead. Uh, no, 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 no. That's owned by a marketing company as well. One big project I did work on this year was NoTrack. Moving it from Bash to Python. That transition took quite a while, but uh, it's advanced the project on quite a way. It's now sped it up, it can do a bit more. So yeah, it's a lot better to work with now. But that was a whole steep learning curve there. 
I think that kind of distracted me from some of the other stuff that was going on and I could honestly work on that a lot easier than I could do videos because obviously mentally it was very difficult the whole situation and I could just keep myself busy with the programming a lot easier than keeping busy with YouTube and I'm sorry to say that's why I've been a bit quieter this year. There's a new long-term support release of Ubuntu, Ubuntu 20.04, and I reviewed the Kubuntu, Ubuntu Mate, Ubuntu itself. I have to say that I thought initially Kubuntu and likes of KD Neon were actually really good. Then I've had some problems with KD this year, so I don't rate them so high this time. I think last year with KD was a lot better than this year with KD. And you're using Kubuntu 2010 on your new computer. Yes, I am. And we'll talk a little bit more about my new computer in a moment. Mm -hmm. Is this my favourite Chinese Linux distribution, Deepin? Oh, perhaps for all the wrong reasons, anyway. Turned out they've got uh, privacy issues again. But at least this time they're admitting it. And now to move on to something major that happened for me personally this year. Uh, as we mentioned previously, I've got a new setup, a new desktop computer. But the kind of beginnings of this idea started all the way back in July with the week of using a Raspberry Pi 4 as a desktop computer. Um, so we did a whole week's worth of videos, a video every day on t setting it up and then using various different operating systems. I mean, I won't dwell on, you know, the various issues that I found at different points with different parts of the setup, with different operating systems. But suffice to say that by the end of it, I don't think we'd established that anything was really... I mean, in, in certain limited situations, we can see where this is going to be useful, but not for my particular... No. My, not for my particular use case, so... Well, there was one distribution we didn't try, wasn't it? But we did later yes. on. Yes, so Twister OS. Yeah. Um, everyone in the comments, the thing is, is is the way that we put this up is we didn't, we'd done pretty much all of the filming for the mm. week and then posted it on YouTube. Um, so everyone in the comments was like, try, try Twister OS and we'd already completed mm. the week. Mm. So we went back and revisited that later. Um and looked at that then. One thing I did like about Twister OS was the ability to change the look and feel to make it look like previous versions of Windows. Mm. I found that quite amusing and that was uh, fairly nostalgic for me. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we I didn't continue using the Raspberry Pi as the desktop PC, unfortunately, but that leads us on to the fact that I actually now have a new desktop computer that runs Linux which is running Kubuntu 2010. And Quids did a whole video on the water cooling setup that I have, and you faced some various problems in trying to set up my oh, new computer. I, I tell you what, I hate building <laughs> mini ITX cases. I mean, first it was what? even getting the parts. That was mm. just not fun. And then, and then, then we kept, I kept, we kept on either selecting, and at one point I ordered the wrong case. Yeah. <laughs> and that was not fun because this was in the lead up to Christmas and this ended up being the Christmas time project and trying to even get our hands on all the bits and pieces that I needed to set it up. But now it's there and I have this nice, this nice shiny new case with the pink lighting inside and it's really pretty. And I'm quite enjoying using Kubuntu at the moment. I mean, as I've mentioned in my Raspberry Pi 4 series, my use case was fairly limited anyway to not very compute heavy stuff, but mostly mostly using it for surfing the web. But the ability to run, for example, 4K videos would be nice. So the fact that I can do that now is, mm. is, is a good yeah. thing. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm enjoying it. It's, uh, it's been it's been interesting because I had my old computer, my Windows one, for quite a quite a while. Quite a Windows few years. eight. Yes, Windows eight. <laughs> Windows eight for quite a few years, and now I've moved on to actually using Linux. Not completely Linux though, because I still have to use a Windows machine for work reasons, so that I'm mm. using the same the same setup as my students. So yeah. well, we did get into gaming a bit this year. <laughs> We've uh, we spent a lot of the year playing Streets of Rage three, didn't we? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, we, we cycled through, I think, the first couple and then settled on Streets of Rage 3, which we ended up playing for quite a while. Yeah, way too long. Got good at it. Yeah. And then we went to Streets of Rage 4. And what you don't know is we ended up purchasing a brand new uh, games console. I say brand new, actually, it was second hand. 
trying to get hold of a PlayStation 5, but uh, as we know, the uh, difficulties in obtaining those towards the end of the year, much in fact since the whole time they've been out. Uh, yeah, we end up buying a, a PS4 <laughs> second hand. So yes, we bought a PS4 at the point it was end of life. <laughs> But it, it's much nicer, I think, to play to play Streets of Rage 4 on the console than... I mean, we have the video here of gaming in Linux, but it is quite nice to be able to play it on a full-size TV screen. And, and oh, yeah. I don't know, there's something, there something about the controls. I just... When I was kind of playing it on the computer, there was something that didn't quite click for me. And then going to the console, I don't know what it is, but I kind of get it a bit more now. I think it's because you're relaxed on a sofa with a surround sound system, yeah. which you don't have on the computer. Whereas here, I don't have my computer chair in here, so I'm just sat on a hard dining chair. Well, the year ended with a big security compromise of Solar Winds, which actually started back in around March or February. Oh yes, the uh, Russians had some fun there. So that's going to cause some problems going forward. But anyway, that was a look back on 2020. I think from, yeah... The period from March onwards, we could honestly say, I would love to forget, and I hope it doesn't repeat. But unfortunately, I think until this herd of stupidity ends, that, that 2021 is going to be much the same. So on that note, thanks for watching. And we'll see you all later. Bye.